Okay, we're at time. Let's start. Um, before I start with my presentation, let me address one thing. Some of you ask me why my t-shirt is backwards or inside out today, and that's just because I'm uh, raising awareness for a charity, which is for kids with very serious uh, disease of very fragile skin. So I just want to say that first. That's why my t-shirt is weird. And now we can go into it. So... Today I want to talk about going past profiler, profiling your PowerShell code or your C-sharp code that is used to implement your uh, binary commandlets using Perfview. Let me say thank you to the sponsors, which are Chocolatey, Sentino Systems, Patch My PC, and Script Runner. My name is Jakob. You probably know me as the owner and maintainer of Pester but I also wrote this profiler module that I will be talking about today and how to combine it with Perfew. I work as a senior software engineer at Microsoft developing VS Test and MS Test, which are two test-related products. But unlike others, like for example, the PowerShell team, I don't represent Microsoft here today, just so you know. You can find me on Twitter if you want to get in touch. My DMs are open. If you would still need more info about Prague, I'm still here for you, so just go ahead and ask me. As my pester talk, there will also be a small raffle. So if you want to win some local beer and a little guide to Prague, if you maybe stay for one more day or two more days, just scan this code. It just requires you to input your name. There will be only one prize because I don't have a profiler swag yet, but if there will be over a million downloads till the next year, then I will make some. So it's in your hands. Um, there are also some more questions in that form. So if you fill them out, it would be awesome, but don't feel pressured. Everyone good? I don't see too many raised phones. There will be one more chance to scan this somewhere in the middle of the presentation as well. So let's start talking about my math module. And my math module has some serious problem. I wrote it yesterday, and it's broken. So let me switch to my command line, just go to the root, clean all of this, and I can do import module math, and then I can look at that. And it exports one command, which is called add number. I will use it. And I will say add number one plus one. And it returns two. Everything is good. I will try to use it with 100 to get one, 101. And it still works pretty fast. I will try to use it with 100,000. And it's slow. And I promise it's not just sleeping on the background because that would be a sucky demo. And so how do, I, how do I see what's going on? So I have profiler, right? So I just grab it. So I import module profiler. And then I will do trace equals trace script and the command that I just run. I run it. And we wait some four seconds to get the result. Something is awfully bad with this command let, or my computer is just super slow, I don't know. So it took six seconds to finish this very simple operation. Gave me the right result, but gave me the right result after a very long time. I look at the trace, top 50 cell duration, and I select some, some of that because I have very small screen estate. And there's just one line, and it tells me, the thing that you just run is slow. So that's not helpful at all. And that's because we are hitting a limitation in Profiler. Profiler can only see PowerShell code. It cannot see anything underneath it. It can see the entry points into c -sharp code, like when you call a binary commandlet or when you call IO file read all text. But in reality, this is still PowerShell code. It just then calls into the actual .NET uh, method. And it also cannot see PowerShell internals. So looking at this problem, I cannot know if my code is wrong or if PowerShell internals are wrong. And uh, I cannot see underneath this using Profiler. 
most of the time, this is a blessing because you don't want to be distracted with all the things that are happening underneath your PowerShell code executing inside of the PowerShell engine with all the .NET stuff that's happening in there. But sometimes it limits your visibility. And also one of the performance optimizations uh, paths that I sometimes recommend is just rewrite parts of your code in C-sharp. And so if you do that, you remove it from being able to optimize it further with Profiler. So maybe we need some other tool, some different tool than Profiler. We simply need to go deeper. And so this tool can be any of the .NET profilers, but one of them that's very used is Perfue. And it's also quite scary. So that's, I, that's why I want to talk about it here. Installing Perfue is very easy. You can use Chocolatey to install it, which is one of the sponsors of this conference, by the way. But I'm not saying that just because I actually do it this way, because it's an amazing way to get quick tools to your system. You can also go to Microsoft slash Perfue to the GitHub repo and download it from the releases. That's usually the best way to get the latest version of Perfue. You can also get it through uh, different bundle packs like the Windows Performance Toolkit, I think, but there the version might be outdated. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I guess it could be updated, uh, outdated. And so if you start Perfue, it looks something like this. You're immediately transported somewhere in like Windows 98, it seems. And there's a blue text on gray background and so on. I think it's also a little bit of a meme for this tool to be ugly, but it's super powerful. And once you get used to what it's trying to show you, I think it's quite understandable. So before we start it, let me talk about some advantages of Perfue. One, it's free. It's available for free from GitHub and it's being actively developed because the .NET team uses it a lot to find uh, performance problems in .NET. It's also working together with Windows kernel, so it's non-invasive to your program. So if you create a DLL, you don't need Perfue to instrument it in any way to like insert little pieces of code inside of your DLL to be able to measure it, because instead of doing that, it simply asks the kernel for the events, and uh, that way it can reconstruct all that information together with symbols and so on. It's very portable because it's just an executable that you can download and unzip. And it also makes sure that all the traces that it makes are very portable. By default, it zips them for you, merges them with all the files that you need, and basically gives you a zip that you can move on to maybe your faster computer or maybe from the cloud to your local computer so you can analyze it locally and conveniently. Disadvantages is that it only works on Windows because it's connected to that kernel and it might be a little hard to use. There is a learning curve to it. some profiling basics. There are basically two uh, uh, approaches, samples and events. They're quite similar, but samples happen at a given time interval. So for example, the kernel CPU sampler will provide a sample every one millisecond of what exactly is running on every single core that you have in your computer. And then there are events. So for example, Profiler and PowerShell as well and other products are emitting events. And those events happen when interesting stuff happens. So when your function is not doing something for 10 seconds, you will get one event at the start and then one at the end instead of one sample every one millisecond. And then when you combine, combine both events and samples, you will get some metrics that uh, Perfue can observe through ETW, which is event tracing for Windows. And it writes them into ETL files, summarizes them, and then you browse them using the tool. There are multiple tools to browse this kind of file, and we might get to that as well. So let's finally start the Perfue and capture a trace. So I have it here, start it up, and it already shows me a little bit overwhelming stuff. There's a lot of text, uh, some browser at the start, uh, at the left. And so you're definitely welcome to read all of this text, but uh, to collect a trace, you would go here to collect and you can select run or collect. 
Run means you start an executable, it will start collecting the information, and when the executable ends, it will stop the collection and save it. Collect you can use to collect already existing process or start a process, stop it, then start another one, and so on. And uh, you can also collect system-wide, so you will collect information from all processes. If you, for example, have two free processes talking together and you want to analyze what's happening, you can use this. So I will click Collect. I don't want to do it machine-wide because it's not interesting to me. And so I can specify the process either by PID explicitly or I will just say PowerShell.exe and I must specify the .exe because otherwise it's not going to work. And I will say this is math, I don't know, 6.etl. I might have some already and put it in my C etl folder. By default, you would have zip and merge clicked, which means that it will create a zip file for you with all the merged files, and then you can move it to a different system. I don't want to waste time doing this because it's kind of expensive, and I'm just going to be doing this stuff locally, so I unclick those two. Then I can go to advanced options, which has way more options than I would like, but uh, by default, they're selected exactly as you will want them. So you want kernel base, .NET, and CPU samples most of the time. And then one more thing that I want to do here is that I want to say star profiler to collect events from profiler, which will contain information about my execution. Now I click start collection. It will be blinking here in blue, telling me it's doing something. And I will repeat that trace again. It runs, it will run a tiny bit slower because we are observing it right now, but it shouldn't be very impactful. Around 5 to 10%, I think. And then I can return to the collection window and I click stop collection. And now I have my ETL trace. I go back to Perfu, which I think in the meantime helpfully switched to the place where the ETL file was put and I have math 6 etl in here. I double click that and I again get a lot of options to choose from. We will focus on just two entries here, events and CPU stacks. So first I want to look at events. Let me see how I'm on time. There's no clock, okay, I guess. <laughs> But I see my clock, so that's okay. I can go here into the filter and I will say profiler and it shows me a list of the events that I actually emitted. You can see there are more mostly coming from .NET and you can enable even more coming from PowerShell. But I don't want to um, complicate this too much. And so in here I can click this start entry and press enter and that will show me all the events that were emitted with the start. And here in the histogram, I will see when they happened during the execution. So this whole line is the whole execution time split into kind of buckets. And then within that, when there is a number or a letter, it means something happened, like an event was emitted. And the higher the number or letter is, that means the more events were emitted at that time. So if I then look at the actual event, I can see the name, when it happened in milliseconds since the start of the collection, in which process, uh, thread ID, process ID, we don't care about that, but this index, function name, and text is what you would find on the events in in PowerShell Profiler, in the Profiler module. That's what we are emitting for Perfu to consume. So then if you want to correlate to events, you can do that either based on the index or based on the text where you would see it on the screen in Profiler. So in here, we saw that the text is add number one and 100,000. And we can look in Perfu and find the same text just here on index three after we did the profiler setup and then after that we do the profiler teardown. 
Why I'm showing this, and I will just go here and select both start and stop, press enter again so I get all of those events in place, and then I have index free, and this one is the stop event. So I have start and stop, and I can see exactly the time span when in this trace the interesting data for me is when I was actually executing add number. So I can select those two. It will show me some information in here, especially I'm interested in the difference between those two timestamps, which is 7,102 milliseconds, which should agree with what we are seeing exactly here in Profiler. I will press Ctrl C to copy this time span. And then I move to the other window, which is interesting, which is CPU stacks. And this has the summarized information that we got from the, from the sampler of what was happening on the CPU. And first it asks me, which process are you interested in? And it orders them based on how much CPU time they consumed. And the most time was consumed in PowerShell. And that's what I'm interested in. So I double click that and it opens this kind of complicated window where it shows me a lot of stuff. But if you have any experience with Profiler in PowerShell, it's very similar. So it shows you what code was executing, in this case summarized by a module. I will go into that a little bit more. Then what is the self percent, exclusive percent, meaning the percentage of the execution taken just by this code, just by this line, but nothing else underneath it then the exclusive actual time on the CPU consumed. So those are the same information, but represented in a different way. And then the inclusive time, meaning how much time was spent in this code and everything that ran underneath it. In Profiler, we call that just a uh, percent. And then the inclusive uh, sorry, this is the inclusive percentage and then the inclusive time, which we called duration in Profiler. And then you have, again, a little graph of when stuff actually happened and the underscore is nothing happened. There was no entry in the stack found for this. And then when there are numbers, we can see that um, stuff was actually happening. And so, as I said, this is a summarization of the data. And in this case, we are summarizing by what's called a module, but you probably know it as an assembly or a DLL. So this DLL has a one representative in this list. And uh, everything from that assembly is grouped into that. For us, that's too little information. It's way too, way too big of a summarization. So we want to change this. And to do that, we will go here in the group paths. Paths stands for patterns. And it uses a kind of weird language, which should be like regular expressions, but it's not regular expressions. But it has like the similar power, but it's aimed at being able to group together and summarize the stacks rather than being a universal kind of text processing language. And so I click this drop down and you will see there's a lot of different entries and we will go for group class entries, meaning group this by en every entry in a class and entry, you probably know it as a method or as a property. And so we will just group by methods in a class. So every method has a representative in this list if it was executed. And so then that changes a little bit and we can see that something that's called big number was consuming a lot of stuff. And if you look here, this is the return type of the method. This is the type in which the method is implemented. So it's inside of system numerics namespace in the big number class, followed by the parameters that it takes. So we can see it's taking a string 
and then hopefully right underneath the exit C a column because I have just two small screen. In the tooltip, you should be able to see format big integer. So we're spending a lot of time formatting some kind of big integer, like a big number. I can then double click this and it will switch me into the callers view. Callers meaning who called this method. And we can see that it's unwrapped for us and it goes all the way down because we entered this basically just from one place. So one place was going up, 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 entering this. But if we would have multiple places in which we would reach this method, you would get a tree more than this. So you would get multiple entries in this tree. And here we can simply go down and look who called us. So big number format was called by big integer to string. So we are converting something to string. This was called then by our math module add number command. So what's probably happening is that we have some kind of big integer and we are translating it into a string. And we spend quite a lot of time doing that 28% of our execution time to be exact. And then if you look down, 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 what you will see is like command process base, internal pipeline processor, pipeline ops. This is the stuff that you will see when PowerShell code is actually executing. And so we were able to reach this point from profiler, see that the add uh, number is a problem in this case, because it was just the only entry, but in your module, you would probably see many entries ending up in something that is actually a binary commandlet or C sharp code or built in commandlet in PowerShell. And then we can then go in here and connect the dots and see up, up what was actually happening inside of the runtime. So some kind of formatting of big integer is a problem. We can look at the second one, which takes a lot of time. And we can see that multiply. Hopefully you can see that just in here. So big integer calculator class multiply method is being invoked. Then op multiply, op meaning an operator, which is like the little star that you put in the code for you to denote a multiplication. And then we call math module, which is my module, multiplication multiply. So some kind of method that multiplied something. And then in here we can see that we're calling math module factorial internal calculate. So rather than calculating one plus one, there is some code that was left over and it's actually calculating a factorial. Okay, that's relevation. That's a good to know. That's probably why it takes so much time on this big number because it doesn't really scale linearly. And that is called from my math module add number. And then I again reach that point where we are offloading to the interpreter of PowerShell code, where I was already able to see stuff in Profiler. So let's double check that. I can just go into my math module. And because my math module is really simple, if I can start Visual Studio real quick and find it, I can navigate to the commandlet. And I can see what's happening there. I can see something that's called factorial internal, exactly as I saw it in the trace, is calling calculate and then to string. So that's the formatting. I go in, I'm actually calling multiplication multiply. And then I'm multiplying the numbers using the operator, the little star for the multiplication. So Perfue showed me exactly where I need to focus on my C-sharp code, what exactly is slow in there. And if I remove those two lines that someone forgot, probably me, my commandlet will be again fast. Of course, this is a very contrived example, very, very simple. But it gives you a framework of attacking different kind of problems. So let me switch back to my presentation. And, oh, that's one more thing that I wanted to talk about. How is Perfue able to see the internals of my module? Because isn't DLL just a bunch of binary stuff that's just like shoved in a place and then executed on the CPU? Yeah, 
But there is also a thing called PDB or symbols, which help you interpret this and uh, link it to actual source code. And then there is also a thing called source link, which you can use to actually link the exact code that you compiled into the DLL plus the PDB to your GitHub repo. So then when someone is debugging your DLL and you ship the PDB, they can just press F5 and they will see the exact code that you committed into your repo in their Visual Studio or in their Visual Studio code. These days you can also click just embed and then you already have just a single DLL that has all of this and you have a source link and you can see all of this. For some reason, PowerShell is not doing this. I asked uh, why not, because it would be awesome to debug. They also don't publish uh, the symbols anywhere, as far as I know. So because my math module has those PDBs and PowerShell doesn't, we wouldn't be able to see anything from PowerShell. So what I had to do is that I locally built PowerShell for the next step, where we will be actually looking at internals. How to build PowerShell, all of that is very well documented on their GitHub repo. But for all of this to be successful, you need those PDBs. And so another slide. Oh, this is how you build it locally, so you have some reference. If you weren't able to scan it, here's the raffle reminder. But now let's look at the curious case of slow pester import that we got reported from DBA checks when they were working on their migration to v5. And uh, what Profiler told us is, well, the import takes four seconds, and get help is causing this. So get help is a built-in binary commandlet, and we cannot really see into it through Profiler. So we need to apply the same technique to see what's actually happening. And then Frode, our other maintainer, also noticed that only the shipped version has this problem, not the one that we built locally for development, but only the one that we have on PowerShell Gallery. And if you download that, it takes four seconds or five seconds, depending on your computer speed. So let's just repeat all of those same steps. I will go ahead, close PowerShell, so we have something clean. I can go to the root, clear all of this, and just repeat all of the same things I just did. So I will go here, click Collect. I will make this named Pester7. I will choose my additional provider to be start profiler. I will start collection, go in here, do dollar trace equals not this, but instead we will do import module pester required. Okay, I only have 541, which has the issue, which is even the latest shipped version, but there will be new ones soon. It runs it and it takes three seconds on my computer to import and this computer is pretty fast. So that is really, really slow. We are always aiming under one second. I am going to stop this, clicking the stop collection button. And I should get my pester seven trace right here. I can double click events, go to profiler I can select start and stop, press enter, and let's look at the trace to see what I was actually seeing. So top 50 cell duration shows me the slowest lines in my code. And the slowest line in my code is calling get help on command info. Get help and uh, this save command get help is just our way to make sure that we are calling the actual get help, not a mock of get help, but the actual built in get help. And so I will grab this, put it in here in the text filter, press enter, and it shows me nothing. And that's because this text filter is a regular expression. So I need to escape all of this weird characters that have a different meaning in regex. Press enter again, and it shows me all the uh, invocation that profiler was able to see. 
So I can choose one, for example, the first one, which was on index 309, and I can grab this time span, control C again to copy this, put it in the CPU stacks. I don't know if I did that step, step before, did I? Did I put the actual time span? Okay, I skipped that in the previous one, but I sh what I should have done is that I copied the timestamp, put it in here. It actually puts both of those numbers into the start, but once you press enter, it's clever enough to split it into the start and end. And now we're focusing just exactly on the time when stuff was happening inside of a uh, trace when we were importing pester. This is again, do little information for me. So I want to click add group class entries. So show me the methods that were actually doing stuff. And here, what I usually do, what's my logic around this is I just go as far down in this trace where I actually start understanding stuff. So if I see GC heap garbage collect, that's not something that I can understand or do something with or this. Um, NTOS kernel, no thank you. Um, GC heap collection again. This is broken to me and then I see this language tokenizer. That's finally something that I can at least understand. And I can double click that and it should switch me into the colors graph. And we reach this from multiple places. So now we don't see that expanded tree. It asks us, choose the one that you want to see. And if there's like a clean path below it, I will auto expand for you. But as long as there are multiple choices, you choose. And so I choose and I can see that the parser is really busy with stuff. And somewhere here, hopefully, I should be able to see get help. Do I? No, it's probably here. And I know why this doesn't work because we're not running in that debug PowerShell. When you're missing information, you don't have those symbols. So let me try that again. I will just run this command that I wrote that starts the developer PowerShell, which is actually built together with the symbols. And I will have to do all of this again. No, I will just go into this pester six trace, which I did few days ago, which has all the other same info. So events, profiler, start, stop. I select that, do get help in this, copy, copy, go to CPU stacks. PowerShell is the process I want to see. Paste, enter. And now, do I see it? Hopefully, yes. What is there? Trend worker prods. Don't, don't. I don't think this is working. Okay, let's try the first thing that I wanted to do again. This is blowing up. <laughs> so uh, dollar trace equals trace script import module pester. We have perfue, yes. Am I on time? Do you have any questions? I can do this in the background. No? Okay, you do. You go. Uh, what was that Instagram thing? I saw that a couple of machines that matching the other What's that format? Uh, the one with the numbers and letters? Okay, I will, I will talk about that once I get back into that right window. XCE. This one would be faster eight dot etl in my etl place and this would be dollar profiler and then finally we start collection hopefully this will run and give me all that info um the histogram is a collection of 32 buckets which show you how busy was the CPU at that time. On the top of the window, you get information about how big is each bucket, so how many milliseconds are represented, and you can use it to navigate to the place where CPU was actually busy 
also you can like select it and right click it and use that to focus on the timestamp. But uh, I usually do it using the events because that just gives me the exact, exact information where I want to be focusing to not be um, distracted by some other things like events that don't really belong to what I'm trying to analyze. And that would be good help. I'm regretting so much not having screenshots of what I actually wanted to show you. Um, this is wrong. This is this. Yes. And then in here in CPU stacks, hopefully we will be able to see what I wanted to show. Is that it? Is this the parser? Color? No, no. Okay, I have no idea what I'm doing wrong. Maybe Pester 5. Yeah, probably. Is that it? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. You're amazing. Oof. So that's what I wanted to see. <laughs> there is a tokenizer and it's really busy. And uh, we can then go up in this and we can see that the parser is busy. And then we can see that the help commands par commands parser is busy. And then there's some script block, and then we can see that the command help provider is busy until we end up in the help system and we end up in the get help command where we end it in the trace inside of profiler. That was a ride. So not this. Let me show you what I actually mean. So here on the top line, we are calling get help, which it is telling me. That's the slow thing. I want to go back to Perfu and see what happened under get help. So this, then this was called, then we called something that's, command, that's called command help provider, which was parsing the help and which was then calling the parser, which is really busy, which was calling the tokenizer and so on. So something is parsing a lot of text in this code. And, uh, this gives me a starting point for my investigation. So what I actually did then is that I opened the, the code for uh, PowerShell, or I can actually go here and just go to dev. It asks me, do you trust those PDBs, those symbols? And I say, yes, I built them myself locally. And then it should show me the source code where the stuff is actually happening. And then what I did is that I started Visual Studio did the same thing in there, set a breakpoint on this exact line so I can look at what the input actually is. And it told me something that starts with a hashtag file script something. And that line was immediately recognizable to me because that's the first line of the PSM module. And so what is happening if we, are we able to look at that code? Maybe we can see it better in here. Help comment parser. Yep, help command parser is passing this root AST extent, which is the whole script that we have. And it's doing it because it's trying to find the help for the function, which you can have defined like this. So it's either above the function or under the function keyword or next to the params. So to be able to grab this synopsis on the top, it's actually walking all the way up to the root of the script and then parsing everything. I guess this is more optimal if you have a short script, but probably not if you have 20,000 lines of code as we do in Pester. And because we were calling should assert operator 26 times, it this happened 26 times in our execution. So we again reparsed the whole script. And then because it was dynamic parameters, then probably the cache into which it puts all of this stuff was every time thrown away and reparsed again. So all of this I could gather because I, it told me exactly in Perfue where I need to go. And I didn't need to search the whole PowerShell repo and find where the problem is. Instead of that, I was able to just focus on that single thing. And it took me like 10 minutes to find this problem.
So that's the demo. Again, thank you, Robert, for help. Now, this is like a general framework. If you're debugging someone else's binary code, if you think you found problem inside of a PowerShell engine and so on, you can use this to find this problem. But uh, PowerShell repo itself also has a really awesome profile for what's called Windows Performance Analyzer. And if you're focusing on a problem that actually is inside of PowerShell Engine, or I'm saying problem, but actually we're using it in a very weird way that is probably not supported. So if you have downgrade in performance and you see it inside of PowerShell Engine, they have much better tools for you to analyze this. You don't have to whip out your Visual Studio and Perfume and this and that. They have all the documentation on how you start a VPA in this document. In this document, there is also a script for Perfue, which adds additional providers that are actually produced from the PowerShell engine, including stuff like parser and uh, command uh, imports and so on. So you can see a lot of great information. And they also provide you with a profile for Windows Performance Analyzer. So then rather than seeing the stuff that I saw in Perfue and gather like the pieces of the histogram and what happens here and what happens there, you would actually see something like this, which I think makes it super easy to see that the parser on that blue line is busy doing stuff over and over and over again. And then because those are events which can hold data, you don't have to rely on like the call stacks that don't have the data. And if you click this arrow in here, it will show you all the events which actually have the entries, which is the immediately recognizable first line of Pester, at least for me. And we can see that it's repeated over and over and over again. But this is only possible because this actual problem is really good fit for what PowerShell team is already instrumenting and what they are already providing. But if you have some other general problem, then Perfume might be a better fit for this, or it's at least useful to know what you do with this pretty amazing tool. Okay, summary is very short. Perfume is a free powerful tool that is not that scary. It looks quite a lot like the profiler that you see in the command line, and please try it. Now we go into the raffle first, and then we do questions. I still have like two and a half minutes. Again, thanks to Richard. <laughs> Robert. <laughs> so profiler. Review. We have 20 responses, so we will again do get dash random. And I still haven't read the documentation, so I will do 21. And I get 7. Now let's see who that is. Responses, individual. Number 7 is... Daniel. Who's Daniel here? Hey. Come grab your beer. <laughs> and enjoy the beer. No, oh, then it's perfect. Just don't drink it here, please. They would kill us. Um, and that's it. Are there any questions? No, no. There. Yes, please, Claudia. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the question is if there is a measure for memory footprint, and there is, it, Perfue can measure a lot of other stuff. Like uh, you can start, you can select in the advanced, and also, yeah, you, you can do it. It would be quite difficult to describe it without an actual example, but it it is aimed on like 
the actual developers of .NET being able to measure stuff that's happening there. So you should be able to do that. And if you also go into the advanced block in like the list of the things, it has a ton of information about what's actually happening, how much time you spend different things and so on. So hopefully, yes. And I repeated that question. Did you, did you see that? Bruce, please. For this one, not yet, because I wasn't sure, but I will... Ah, question. Did you open an issue for the thing that you were just showing? I wasn't because, I don't know, I just didn't get to it yet. But I will probably ask about it in the discussions to see if that's totally unsupported or maybe a place for optimization. I'm sorry? Okay, okay. Yeah, I will open an issue then. Yes, please. Yes, that's a good question. If we can automate perfume. Uh, I, sa I said it. The question was, if we can automate perfume, and you can. It actually has an amazing uh, interface in the command line. If you will go to the PowerShell repo, for example, they automate it just by running perfume, telling it to execute. You can give it a lot of stuff. Like You can tell it, if there is a counter in Windows that will go over this threshold, then you start the trace and you trace for like this long, but you can also decay that threshold over 24 hours. So then you don't wait for a user to like grab five gigabytes of memory 24 hours because after seven hours, you actually just want three gigabytes of memory or something like that. So you actually get a trace within that 24 hours. There's also a programmatic interface where you can consume ETW, and that was something that I was considering to do for Profiler, where I see this is actually an endpoint where I cannot see. I would grab those events myself and summarize them underneath that. But uh, for that, I need to get some good feedback on issues, like from at least 10 people saying this would be super useful to me because it's a lot of work. I'm over time. Okay, I go off stage now. Thank you all very much for listening and sorry for the hiccup in the demo.